first is Amelia Wilson with James Comer's Field Rep. Do you have anything you'd like to say? No, just thank you for having me today. If I can ever be of help, please let me know. Thank you. And then we have Jason Hassert uh, from Rand Paul's office. Well, thank you. I enjoyed being here on Saturday night for the Bluegrass opening. I really appreciate it. I look forward to hearing the judge's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any members who have a guest with them today? Bo, do you have somebody with you? I've got smart guys with me. Jason, Mike, and Philip. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all very much for coming today. Uh, next, we'll have Shannon come up and introduce our speakers for today. Okay, our first speaker of the day is Beaver Down, Paul Mayer. Paul Sanderford. <laughs> I was not blessed with words. <laughs> Okay, Paul is also with the Beaver Down Tourism Commission, and he will give us a report on the upcoming events scheduled so far for 2018. Please make welcome Mayor Paul Sanderford. What well, you have to forgive me a little bit. I'm going to have to cheat and use notes. I didn't know I was going to be doing this until just a very short time ago. Uh, Joe Beth Embry, our tourism coordinator, was supposed to be here today. And she wants to extend her apology for not making it, but she has a little fella, I think Edison was born in October, I believe, who is fighting the flu, and a big fella named Alex who is fighting the flu. And she said to tell you, Edison does it a whole lot better than Alex does. So. But uh, I told her, you stay home, we just seem not have you around anyway. <laughs> but uh, did pick up some stuff, and appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I know the commission is thrilled to be able to sponsor to today's meeting. Hope everyone enjoyed it. I want to thank Francis again as well. And just a little bit on some of the things we're doing and got go, uh, going on. And again, we've got two sets of notes here, so please bear with me. Um, one thing she told me to be sure and do is let everybody know about some of the concerts we do have already scheduled. Of course, most of you are aware of our John Prine Tyler Children's concert coming up in May. And uh, she said, please tell them there's only 830 tickets left out of the 4,000 we've set up to sell on this. So this is going to be probably our first, well, it will be our first major sellout. We don't know there's going to be tickets available show day. So that's something we're very excited about. Uh, another one where tickets are on sale, we've got the Turnpike Troubadours and Shooter Jennings, and Chris Knight will be here in August. And uh, we've got a big 80s rock concert scheduled for July. We've got one more contract to sign on it to be able to announce, you know, all the final lineup on it. But it's one thing I think people from 80s music, Andy Miller sitting back here thinking, all right. I think we'll really enjoy this one. It's going to be something we've not quite seen in, uh, in Beaverdam in Ohio County. Uh, one of our favorites is we've had over the past years, the Oak Ridge Boys. They are coming back in June. And we do have a concert scheduled at the end of June with uh, our own Jason Crabb. He's going to be coming back and doing a show. So we really hope to have a good turnout for that one. But uh, a lot going on at the amphitheater. But uh, we've got a lot going on in general, period. Uh, of course, we're working on our strawberry festival right now. Uh, it's already uh, starting some work on some of our vendors. One of the big things we're doing this year, we're having a NASCAR experience with it this year. We're, NASCAR is going to be coming in and be a part of the festival. So we're excited about that. We had a zip line two years ago and then the Sharks last year. So it's like, what can you do? You know, it gets to the point where you just don't even, you just look. So the NASCAR thing's going to be pretty exciting. But uh, I know Joe Beth is spending a lot of time right now working with uh, the business community. Anything that, uh, especially retail that can be done that is tourism related. Uh, she's trying to do some work with. I know there's a lot done back during the holidays with some holiday shows and some uh, events and open houses and what have you working with. And I think what we pride ourselves the most about is that, uh, and I hear this a lot, I still, even at this point, people talk about what are they coming here to see? Tourism. They keep wanting one of the tour buses pulling up. And I'm like, what you, you have to understand is everything we do in the name of tourism, whether it be the amphitheater, the, the parks, the festivals, is everything that our own local citizens can utilize every day of the week if they choose to. And, and we've gone beyond the borders of Beaver Dam. I know uh, we've done some uh, sponsorship for the events. We've done stuff from Centertown Days to Portsville Days, and, and about every little day is in between. Uh, we did some stuff with Harker this past year. Uh, we've done a lot of work with the Rosine Barn. We've done a lot with the Courthouse Players, uh, the Rosine Community Park. You know, there's just a lot of things that it, it's, it's about getting it out into the community because it all comes from the community. So that's one thing we're proud of. And I'm really proud of the fact that of uh, the money coming in, 
because I know I hear it's a tax, it's the restaurant tax, I didn't realize that, but a third of it, one third of it, comes from outside of Ohio County. Where else are you going to get that kind of return? <laughs> well, you're getting somebody from that doesn't even live in the county paying for it. So we're excited about that. Uh, one thing we're doing right now that is a little unique, we are kind of expanding on the idea of tourism. <laughs> it, it's part of an economic development tool we're using in the city of Beaver Dam. And we're working with retail right now. We have signed a contract with a retail consultant. Uh, this is something that started January 2nd, is, or actually uh, was our official start date with it. Uh, we've already got our first reports. I had a teleconference with them yesterday. And uh, some information I'd just like to throw out there that really impressed me. Our population, what they call our market area for right here in, in Beaver Dam, is over 38,000 people. Uh, that surprised me a little bit. That's not the numbers I had. I know Grant had helped me. When I first went into office seven years ago, uh, I got with Joanna and she put me with one of the interns to help kind of get some estimated numbers of the population within a 10 mile radius, 20 mile, and 30 mile. And, and these numbers are even higher than what we've been using all along. So that's a good thing. Uh, I always like those numbers to go up. And, and I asked him, I said, okay, I've got to know, how do you come up with some of this stuff? And I'm learning technology. Uh, Lee can help me with here and Dustin. I know they all, they're, they're trying to drag me into the 21st century still, but the cell phones, they're picking the cell phones. They did a one round from Walmart and at the high school area and the shopping center areas out there, they did one from the downtown area and one mile on the parkway. And he said, I give you a list of where everybody's in town came from. I'm like, cool, that's good to know. And it's stuff we're starting to, to expand upon. Uh, they are doing a lot of work with our, on our retail as far as our uh, preliminary gap and leakage information. I was amazed at how much money that just 38,000 people would spend in a, in a year's time. Uh, I was disappointed in how much of it's actually spent here and how much of it leaves here. And that's some of the things we're working on right now. Uh, I know they've already developed a list of 17 different businesses that they're wanting to try to make some contact with and, and one of them has already expressed an interest back. So we're not 30 days in yet. And, some potential. May nothing come of it at all, but it's one of those things, if you don't get out and, and try to find something and push forward, we know it's not going to happen. The days of sitting around waiting for it to come to you are gone, so we're getting out and hustling up a little bit. I'm also excited about what this information can provide to our local business community. You know, there's a lot of people here that say, I may be interested in starting up in a business, and if somebody's got an idea for something, call us. Uh, we'll do anything we can to help you get it off the ground. We've got a lot of the information now that might can help you decide what you want to go to. I know it can be something useful to a lot of our retail businesses we already have here. It may be an item that no one ever thought about. It's like people spending a lot of money somewhere else on this. Maybe it's something you want to add to, uh, you know, mix you already have. Uh, but it's something, economic development is important to the city. We just bought a uh, half a block of buildings in downtown Beaver Dam. The old Ashby buildings is what I know them as are on West 2nd Street. <laughs> There's five buildings in this area, and we've already had, I've had four people already contact us interested in renting and want to know about getting in there and what we can do with them. Uh, one of them is very serious. Uh, so we've got some things we're doing. Uh, we look at the fact, and, and I appreciate the judge very much. I've heard him make on more than one occasion that Beaver Dam is part of Ohio County. Uh, we like to think we're doing our part to help Ohio County, uh, and we like to think we're doing our part even outside of our borders to we're doing to help. But, if there's anything we can do for anybody, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, call Joe Beth. She'll be the one to be able to take care of you. At jemrybdtourism at gmail.com. And uh, she can help you out. We do encourage any of you to check out our website. We do have a, uh, just started a month, or not even a monthly, an electronic newsletter. It will be going out, and you can sign up for it on our website to keep you abreast of all the concerts and stuff coming up, uh, the festivals and other events coming up. We, you know, our sound's on second. Is going to have our second season this year. We're looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of things happening in the, in the community. Uh, I think it's going to make a big difference. We just walked up and down Main Street one day last week. Uh, our city superintendent and I was walking up and down Main Street because we're getting ready to do some work in our old fire station. We're going to move our city commission meeting room out into the old fire station and make it, and it'll be available for uh, some space, not this big, but uh, for rentals and stuff that could be available for the community. But we're just walking and said, you know, he said, you know, Mayor, said, this time next year, or even this summer, you know how different all this is going to look. Because we have a lot of construction on Main Street right now. Uh, the last empty building, or the only empty building we have right now that it has nothing really going on with it, construction-wise, is just sold. I think that deed transferred in early January, and I know there's supposed to be construction starting in it. So, uh, if, you, if you drive through town right now and you see paper over the windows, it's not because there's nothing going on in there. It's because they're going to wait and uh, display it all when they get it done. But... 
Uh, thank you again very much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, there are some uh, items on your desk. I think Joe Best sent some koozies, and I know Jody provided some information uh, on the impact tourism has in our county. Uh, like I said, we work a lot with, with Jody on some of their events as well as as well. She's a huge help with ours because they do the two of them do interlock, uh, intermingle. But it's something all working together. We're going to make it uh, make a splash here on High County, and we're going to have a good time at the same time. Nothing wrong says you can't do both. But thank you all very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Paul. Some interesting stuff coming up this year. Our next speaker of the day is David Johnston, our judge executive. Uh, this is David's eighth time giving the state of the county address. Please make welcome David Johnston. Thank you. Uh, this is a pleasure. Like she says, it's the eighth time. And uh, uh, this will be only the second time I've read it, but I've got a little more structured program today than I normally have. Uh, we're talking about not so much about infrastructure and those accomplishments which have been great that I've told you about in years past. This time we're going to talk about what should be important or what we think is important to the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I'm going to start by saying the state of Ohio County is very good. Uh, our budget is over 14 million for county government. We have a steady stream of revenue, which is better than most other counties, counties around us. And we do operate as mandated on a balanced budget. Our debt capacity is $20 million, and we're only using 16% of it at this time, a little over 3 million. Uh, Ohio County is a trendsetter, I'm talking about county government, in IT features. Uh, we use an online meeting system for fiscal court. The meetings are live streamed in an effort to be open about all county business. Our accounting software at the fingertips of Treasurer Ann Melton makes financial information readily available to anyone that asks for it. Ohio County Government and all department has 135 employees. We provide good pay and great benefits for those uh, providing the services to us in Ohio County. We provide training for our employees and encourage outside training as well. And we provide incentive to any employee that completes college courses. We encourage all to, uh, employees to participate in community activities. We allow employees to participate in junior achievement, volunteer fire departments, or the chamber uh, during work time. We also encourage cooperation among uh, departments. We call this being a part of the team. On the economic development front, OCDA, our county's economic development arm, and Director Chase Vinson opened a state-of-the-art facility to help entrepreneurs launch their businesses and train citizens in remote jobs. This facility is downtown Hartford, and we call it the Hub. OCDA also provided $99,000 in training for citizens to train in software development or coding. Uh, OCDA, through the revolving loan program, helped three new businesses get started in 2017 alone. This program has created at least 67 jobs. Through OCDA, financial incentives in the amount of $750,000 resulted in the investment of $6 million to expand an existing industry and provide 40 new jobs. In recent years, three other large manufacturers have been helped to, with incentives to expand. Uh, $800,000 road extension in the Bluegrass Cross Business Center makes us much better prepared to welcome new business into the growing park. Uh, the interstate designation for Nature Parkway will help as well. And that's right on cue. It's going to happen soon. Our airport is an asset to our community. Under the new management, exciting things are happening. This is a rabbit in the hat for economic development. 
New business constructions and expansions in the county are too numerous to mention. There are other prospects that are looking hard at bluegrass crossings now. Manufacturing jobs in Ohio County uh, are, are up. 2,859 folks work in manufacturing in here. This represents 39% of the workers in the county. There are many opportunities for uh, careers in the industry here. There was 100 openings right now. For anyone that wants to go to work, they can. This in part is why the median income for our county has risen 11.4% in recent years to over $40,000 per year. And workforce development. Early in this job, I realized that workforce development was the biggest hurdle we had to uh, attracting new industry in our county. We brought in Kenny Altry, a professional educator with experience in county government and great knowledge of the community to get us moving in the right direction. And with his guidance and effort, as well as the effort of many others, we're seeing that movement. We have been uh, awarded a work ready in progress uh, certification. We have raised the numbers of ACT work keys certif certificates from 185 to 1,488 in, in uh, one year. That's a great lead. We have lowered the percentage of people without a high school diploma or GED in our county from 21 to 17.5%. That's a significant drop. While seeing high school graduation jump from 88 to 94.3%, we commend our public schools for this great accomplishment. We have partners with OCTC to build a technology skill trade center by contributing $25,000. The percentage of fo uh, folks with an associate degree has risen from 16.4 to 18.7%. We've got a ways to go, but we're in the right direction there. We have recognized the need for soft skill trainings. To this end, our court contributed $3,000 to Junior Achievement Program. Nine volunteers presented this to all high school seniors in Ohio County. Our fiscal court totally funds our career center, which provides training and helps create jobs. Our center helps employees and employers with getting workers to fill their needs. We also provide the f facility and overhead and costs for our adult education center. As for recreation, the OIK Park System has a new park director, Bo Wright, and an expanded budget to enhance recreational opportunities at our five county parks. There is an exciting movement now called Trail Town. We have just been awarded $65,000 recreational trails grant to create more paddling access points on Rough River. There was already three in operation at this time. Many volunteer organizations and individuals make the opportunities for recreation at our parks nearly endless. And then there's tourism. After many years of preparation and anticipation, the Bill Monroe Bluegrass Music Museum will open this spring. Ohio County Tourism and Director Jody Fleener will move into the facility to operate and manage it. A fundraiser was held there on the 27th of the month, which was last Saturday night. The event raised more than $7,000 that will go for uh, displays and, and get us open and operating. The revamped travel center on the parkway will reopen next month. This is our venue to get our information out and opportunities for travelers coming through the county. The Bill Monroe Foundation has reorganized and has the Bill Monroe Home Place open on a schedule and are doing tours. They also have plans to bring back the festival to Jerusalem Ridge. The Beaver Dam Amphitheater is such an asset to our county. They have provided the best of entertainment to our residents so we don't have to travel to go to concerts. And I already had this down before Paul said it. 
They also bring in many tourists to the county each year. I understand that 2018 will be the best year yet. All the festivals and community days uh, we have draw many to our county as well. And the overall quality of life, tax rates, which is the lowest in the world, our peace and safety, uh, we pay more per capita than any other county in the state on, on uh, law enforcement, our recreational opportunities, our improving infrastructure, which includes all the blacktop roads and bridges and all those things we built. Nearly everybody has water to their house now. When uh, 25 years ago, that didn't seem possible. And just the pace of life. Here makes Ohio County the very best place on earth to live. And again, the state of our county is very good indeed. And that, I think I've got a minute for questions. Anybody have them? Has any? Thank you. both for speaking today and the information you provided for us. Now we have a couple drawings to do. Uh, the door prize today is uh, donated by of course Beaver Dam Tourism and uh, it's two tickets to an event at the Beaver Dam Amphitheater. Tickets are not here so just be sure to leave your contact information with Judy and we'll get that information to you um, for the winner. So if you read ticket Ticket number 608470. Wow. All right, we've got our winner. Just stop and see Judy on your way out and she'll be sure to get you those tickets. Okay. Our business in the spotlight is Amy Nonweiler from United Way. You knew I was going to mispronounce it. Um, be sure to get Judy your information with United Way and we'll be sure to include you in, in our uh, email and PowerPoint presentation. Thanks for saving me there, by the way. <laughs> uh, we have some announcements before we dismiss. Uh, mark your calendar for the events coming up. Tonight at 6 p.m., the OC Monitor is hosting um, a writing about your community. And that is again tonight at 6 p.m. at the Ohio County Library. Annex. Annex. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ohio <coughs> County Library, Annex. 6 p.m. Uh, Sunday, February 11th, the Western Kentucky Botanical Garden brunch is from 10.30 to 1. And that's 25 Carter Road in Owensboro. Also from February 11th through February 18th, the annual orchid show and sale will be going on. There's flyers on the back table for um, an event that Paisley Pig in Beaver Dam is hosting on February 17th. This is a book signing for the book uh, by local author Brian Taylor. Even if you don't, uh, the book is available, of course, online and it'll be available at the book signing <coughs> as well. February 24th, New Beginnings 30th Anniversary Benefit Auction and Annual Dinner and Casino Night. There's also flyers on the back table for that as well. And then the Chamber uh, on April 19th will be hosting, along with Beaver Dam's Women's Club, a candidate forum. Candidates will have a cook-off and question, a question and answer session uh, with those candidates. So please mark your calendar for all those events. Again, I'd like to thank you all for coming out today. Um, thank you for coming on the rescheduled date. We appreciate you all uh, supporting us. Our next meeting is scheduled for February 20th. If there's no other announcements, then we'll go ahead and dismiss. You all have a great day. <laughs>